Hello and welcome back to the Sierra Nevada Ski Resort. And I feel my nose is appropriately clogged for this biome. So <laughs> let's not talk about this. Why did I bring it up? Uh, here you see me doing a ski slope, adding a ski slope from one level up to the uh, T-Rex exhibit I did in the first video of these and it's just a matter of uh, sloping, smoothing, sloping, painting, snowy texture and then I went to decorate the the edges of the slope with rocks, lots of rocks, a ton of rocks because um, well I can only use my memories of what uh, skiing was like 20 years ago. <laughs> um, but I really liked um, on the easier ski slopes that you sort of emerged into this wonderful nature with towering uh, snow walls that have been compressed to uh, almost ice and it sort of it f sometimes it felt like you were riding in a different world into snow caverns and stuff like that so I wanted since I can't do this here I wanted to create something a uh, similar feeling to this experience I have. So I created rock formations that, um, well, for one, they just clearly show you where the slope ends, where the edge is, where you, you're not supposed to go with your skis. And on the other hand, it creates interesting visuals. So I spent uh, some time looking at the slope from the direction you would be going, coming from. And here what I did with the rocks was just try to emulate this feeling of this these snowy walls that sort of collapse onto you and you have this wall beside you and it's really pretty and you're in this other world that uh, yeah you can't usually go to so I tried I don't know uh, creating interesting formations with rocks and yeah I think it worked out pretty nicely um lots of rocks <laughs> as I said and uh, later I'm adding also look at this I really like the view you maybe you see what I mean when you look at this it's just like you're in this place that is very special uh, because it looks so different from what you're usually used to yeah so, uh, as I said, lots of rocks, then I added a little bit of vegetation and bushes, uh, shrubs, which are vegetation as well, but uh, as individually placeable ones, and uh, that's pretty much it. Later, I'm going to add flags to the slopes, uh, just to make sure that people, um, which is I, uh, <laughs> me, um, know where to go so to i'm just flanked the slopes with those flags and here i'm creating another slope it's basically the same process and it goes behind the pararaptor exhibit that i built in the last video so you get a really special view um, when you're riding this slope is it riding or i don't know uh, when you're skiing down the slope um and yeah, because I figured uh, there, I didn't have much, uh, many slopes yet and I needed to add f some and I also wanted to have be some, some of them to be special and uh, to have a really, really nice view that you only get from the slope and it's really nothing like 
uh, going into one of the viewing galleries. You can also do this if you're scared of or you don't like skiing. I mean, this is a place for the whole family. You can also go on a hiking trip or uh, just ride the lifts and stuff. But um, yeah, I wanted the people to have diff several opportunities of seeing the animals and skiing is part of it. So this is the next slope there. Uh, and it's turning nighttime, <laughs> and now I'm creating this roundabout that is, well, sort of the arrival point. Um, oh, my cat's screaming. Uh, the arrival point when you take the lift, um, and it gives you several directions you can go to. It's connected to those two slopes I just created, but it's also uh, going to be connected. My cat's crazy to a guest section that I'm going to build in just a second. Wait for it, it's coming up. And also another, uh, there I'm starting to uh, uh, do some path work for the guest section. Um, I haven't included the build for the staff section in this uh, speed build because uh, there is really no need for a staff section, and I don't know why I built it. I just felt that I had to, but it's not meant to be experienced by guests. Uh, the only view into this uh, staff section you get is um, the one I'm creating right now with the path. Uh, you can look into the very small... Um, enclosure that is connected to the hatchery uh yeah so that's it um and here i'm adding a few buildings for people to actually go there i also added later on a viewing tower that is looking into the pyroraptor exhibit just because i wanted people to go there so it doesn't look so empty um but the view is awful. It's just, it's just to sort of trick the game um, to have the people come here. Um, so yeah, path work, as I said in, I guess, the last episode. No, I didn't talk to you then. Uh, but what I uh, wanted to tell you is that I wanted to try something different from my usual wavy flowy path designs. And I went for a uh, more geometric, very straight and edges and stuff and um, just to try s out something different. And um, this is one of those times that I have, I seem sometimes to forget how this game works because <laughs> I, I place these walls and, and lights and I actually wanted them to just be one... Um, one long, I don't know, p uh, thing where I could put plants, but it didn't work out. But instead of, uh, you know, rearranging the path and uh, just aligning them up so they fit together without any um, gaps in between, I've, I decided to go different a different route here and just change my idea. Although I could have just added some path to the sides, but never mind. <laughs> ah, and here I'm adding just something that I like to do lately is adding one of those signs backwards and put lights in front of it and pretend that there is information about something on there. Um, and then I lined this uh, fence with these concrete barriers just to make sure that people don't touch it and um, yeah now I'm hiding the the back side of these buildings with the Malta walls and uh, here as well I went I don't know, a sort of a detour because I wanted them to be really snug and perfect. and But it didn't work out because the space is just a little too, too, too long um, to make those mortar walls fit snugly. Uh, so I tried to hide this 
a gap between with trees, which I really like, but I changed later um, because I added lights instead. And it sort of, it hides the gap much better than the trees do, but uh, I could have just gone with the trees. They look really, really nice. Uh, anyhow, that's just what I did. So yeah, um, and here I'm adding lights to the corners and realizing, wait a second, they are exactly uh, the same width as these gaps. So let's put them there as well. That's what I did. And then I'm repeating the whole process on the other side. So it looks similar. Um, well, not similar, but the same. <laughs> Very geometric. And here I'm adding those uh, flags to the edge of the enclosure, to the, um, the fence, um, to indicate that people can stop there when they are skiing and maybe read something about the dinosaurs. This is <laughs> me trying out the slope and it works. This is nice. And yeah, so this is when I started adding flags to the slopes and I think it adds a lot. You uh, really from from the top view you usually have onto your park, uh, it makes them so much more distinguishable as a ski slope, uh, even though it's clearly not. Uh, they are clearly not because this is just not how the game works, but... Just these little things add so much sometimes. So yeah, again, uh, adding rocks. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. You can officially call me crazy rock lady because I really do spend some time in this game uh, just uh, placing rocks and not being sure where to put them. And uh, really thinking about where to, where I put my rocks, which is a little strange, but that's just how I am. <laughs> yeah, um, bushes, bushes, bushes. What else can you do? Bushes, lovely. So yeah. Um, this slope also needed flags, so I went ahead and I went ahead. I went to also put some there. That's it. And um, just a little bit of decorative uh, foliage because you can't never have enough of it. Oh, and this area that is empty to the right of this slope, I later uh, built an enclosure there for Cryolophosaurus, but I apparently forgot to press record, so it's missing. Um, I'm just telling you now, you're going to see where I put it and where I put the viewing galleries. I'm also going to uh, add another ski slope that runs right next to it and uh, connects this section that I'm working on right now to another guest section. But before we do that, I'm just decorating this roundabout a little with just water. And who would have thought our guest rocks? <laughs> and foliage. Yeah, uh, that's kind of my thing, I guess. <laughs> Ach, yeah, what, what, what can you, what can I say? It's just, this is, this is a very, very rocky video today. I hope it's getting more diverse in the future videos. <laughs> Not as much rock placing, but uh, again, this is just how I am. This is what I like doing and what I like to spend my time with. So this is the exhibit I was talking about um, that I didn't record, but it's um, really nothing 
of the ordinary, out of the ordinary, nothing special. It's just water, a little bit of terrain elevation, trees, rocks. <laughs> I spared you some rock placement there, but fret not, there is still some rock placement to come in this video. <laughs> Ah, wonderful. Checking the view. And there I have two viewing galleries. And this is uh, going to be an, become another ski slope to another guest section. Oh, there you go. There are the rocks I was talking about. And the cryolophosauruses, they are after the free update and the feathered DLC, a feathered species pack, the only uh, dinosaurs still left in this park that don't have feathers but they still fit with the with the biome so I kept them um, you maybe saw some Euplocephalus uh, running around in the background with the uh, uh, pyroraptors I sold them and just put more pyroraptors in there and this has uh, turned out to be a uh, all feathered dinosaurs park. Uh, I'm saying dinosaurs because there are no flying reptiles in here, no aviaries, because, well, I felt like it would destroy the view. Here I'm placing another lift, quote unquote, and I was checking the view from the entrance, from the entry point, because I wanted it, well, I wanted this to look like a lift on an actual mountain. So um, I checked the placement and I liked how it looked. It, um, yeah, I, I had the illusion that this was a lift and then I added a hotel section at this uh, mountain top, which was a little unnerving because of the terrain cannot flatten, cannot flatten. If I ever read this again, I'm telling you I'm going to destroy something. <laughs> um, well, um, I managed to fit a few hotels there, not as many as I would have hoped. But that's just what it is. Um, I'm going to add two small hotels and that's just really all there is uh, going to go that is, what, what am I talking about? Anyhow, path work. Let's do some path work. Um, yeah, it, it's, here it's really just a matter of filling the space. And my nose is so clogged. <sighs> Sorry, guys, if I sound terrible. <laughs> yeah, um, lots of path work there are I just was thinking can I really not add another building let's there has to be a place for one okay yeah small small hotel I'll take it if it fits it fits okay thanks um wonderful and then I tried to add a shop because I thought it would be nice for the people to s who are staying there to have like a little restaurant up there. But I guess they will have to eat at their hotel. No restaurant for them at the mountaintop, which is a little sad. But, well... Then I changed the path color uh, because I felt it looked strange with all the red tiles, the terracotta tiles of the hotels to have all this gray path there. And I wanted to, it to feel special and festive and, well, beautiful. So I changed it to the fancy path color. What am I doing here? I don't know. Uh, looking around. And yeah, then I went on to create another viewing gallery. Um, I raised the terrain for that so that it's looking over the path and over the, the fence. And yeah, I decided to add this little elevated uh, section there with 
another exhibit on the other side and I'm adding a lot of viewing galleries here to this um, exhibit that is going to become the home of two theories and in this video uh, or when I was building this, I also added coelophyses, but I exchanged them for the uh, Sinocerapteryx, and um, I put them in a few places in the park, uh, the, those fluffy little fellers. And yeah, then uh, I added, well, it's not a staircase, um, a ramp. <laughs> to the next level, but um, I'm not going to show you what's going to happen on the next level today. That's something for another video. Here I'm just creating a, another guest section with shops and restaurants and uh, yeah, something where you can have a drink. And again, as I said, I'm trying to use different shapes from uh, what I usually do with the path. And I think it, I, I don't know, sometimes it doesn't look like something very special from the top view, but from the first person perspective, it's kind of nice. And I uh, think these sharp edges and forms that I'm creating here are also very interesting to look at. I don't know. It's interesting. I don't really, it doesn't feel like me, you know, because I always tend to go back to these flowy path patterns uh, that you know from, well, my uh, autumn park or from the, uh, what was it called again? Uh, the one I built on Yosemite for the Battle of the Builders. I don't remember what it was called. Um, yeah. But again, this has some interesting visuals. It creates shapes that I wouldn't normally use. So... You sometimes ha just have to try different things. So guest section, guest section, the guest section. So this is going to become the habitat in which two fairies and Sinusoropteryx are going to live. I also went in and added one of those viewing, uh, what are they called? Not the log gallery, but the other thing we got from the free update. I added one way in the distance back there where there's this little puddle of water. I deleted that and replaced it with one of those viewing domes, I think it's the word. Yeah. Um, Redwoods, because I wanted to change the vegetation just a little bit. And there wasn't much that I could do back then. Also, but I have loaded into some of my older parks and um, just to look at them and see if I could make them even more fantastic uh, with the free update and all the foliage that we have now and I felt like turning on the all, all foliage option really put a strain on my computer because when I did that it just went I mean the f frame rates just went spiraling downwards um, but so uh, uh, the strange thing is that when I reloaded into them with the all foliage option turned on the frame rates were fine again so I don't know what's happening there uh, let's just hope that it's just a hiccup and um 
ja, what can I say? I'm placing rocks again, because that's what I do. <lacht> Uh, anyhow, I hope you liked this uh, little section of the park build. Um, I'm trying to break, to uh, do something different. As I said, this is the view and the, uh, I needed to add trees to this slope there. That isn't really a slope, but it's where well, the terrain is sloping down a little. And I wanted to create the illusion that the theories could go down into the woods there. And this is it. I hope you like this video. I hope you give it a like and consider subscribing. Um, and stay tuned for what is to come after this. Thanks for watching. Bye.